Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial I am coming to you with that famous, famous or should I say infamous <laughs> <laughs> honey cow is it not gorgeous guys we've been waiting a very long time for this particular piece to be done and is now finally complete <laughs> oh gosh it is a four-part series sorry guys if you are joining us new today firstly welcome uh, secondly um, we have been trying well I have been trying to do this honey cow for quite some time now it's finally complete and I'm very very happy about that so there you go and look at that button oh seven dollars ten can you believe the button <laughs> they're very expensive aren't they guys <laughs> oh i had to put that in didn't i <laughs> but look how intricate it is it is a gorgeous button and i cannot wait to wear the cowl i don't know if i'll be able to wear it um but here we go <laughs> you never know right let's get on with what we use to make our honey cow we used firstly the Bendigo Woolen Mills range of the Stella range. It is the copper metallics and um, it is 50% uh, bamboo, 50% wool. Cause for a four point needle. Uh, yours truly was using a five point hook. Why? Well, I wanted it to be a nice thick um, honey cow, or I should say cow. Um, we will need also our, yes, we'll need that darning needle. Sorry, guys. You will need a pair of scissors and you will also need a tiny little bit of this pearl. It comes from the same range as a Stella. I don't think it's a metallics, but it's the same Stella range. It is called pearl. You can use any color you like. Now, why did I use these colors? Well, for those of you who knew my honey, she was a King Charles Cavalier. She was called the Blenheim. And the Blenheim itself was kind of like a, a light orangey brown with a bit of white. And at the end of this particular part one of the series, um, I will have a picture of her. She was a stunning looking girl and she was my girl. Okay, there we go. It's done, guys. <laughs> Today is part one. I'm not going to talk anymore because we have a four part series to get through. However, today we are working on part one of the infamous honey cow. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, guys, as mentioned in the promo, you will need your yarn, both your copper and your pearl. Pop that out of the way. You will need your five millimeter hook. Yes. And you will need your scissors and you will need, yes, guys, there is a little bit of darning. Not a lot, just a little bit, so don't stress. I will make it very, very simple. But at the moment, right now, this very moment, you are going to be doing stitch number two of the honey cow. For my regulars, they know what that is. They can just pop down in the description box down below and click on that link. For um, anyone joining us new, if you have not practiced that stitch, we will show you just briefly now. But I do have a practice stitch called double crochet in the front loop, double crochet in the back loops. Um, I will pop that link, the very first link you see in the description box down below. If you want to practice that stitch, click on that link, have a practice and come back to us. Otherwise, we're going to get started right now. Okay. Yarn over your finger once, yarn over your finger twice, hold it there, pass your back loop halfway over, hold it there, pass the other loop all the way over, grab your hook, pop it in that little loop and give it a tug. Easy, easy? Okay. All right. Well, let's go. We're going to chain up 80 stitches chain is one yarn over hook two yarn over hook three yarn over hook four and five six seven eight nine ten so continue in that manner until you get to 80 chains and i will meet you up Alrighty, here we are at the end of our 80 chains yay <laughs> it's looking good all right so what we're going to do now is firstly bring up that nice and close now we've got 80 chains okay we want to chain another two so chain one two okay so we now have 80 chains so we're going to go we have 82 chains sorry <laughs> we're going to go count back three so that's one two and three we're going to put a yarn over hook we're going to pop our hook in just one thread not the both loops because usually i do them in both loops but we're just going to pop it in one thread right there 
Okay, and you'll know why towards the end of the tutorial. So it's yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull through the last two. Okay, we're going to do it again in the very next stitch right there, but just one thread only. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull through the last two. So we're going to do it again in the next loop. Okay, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, very, very simple. This part of the row is very, very simple. Very, very. Okay, so what I want you to do, girls, okay, bring that out. Get across to those last two stitches and I'll meet you up. All right, here we are at the end of the first row. Now, don't stress about how small it looks because we are going to be putting our border on this okay our border rows so there will be a certain amount of rows that you can put on and I think I do about five or six I can't remember but if your cowl is looking smaller put seven put eight put nine put whatever you like so don't stress whether it looks a bit small now okay depending on your yarn that you're using too by the way okay all right so here we are let's get our last two double crochets in Okay, so there's one in there, right there. Okay. And then there's one in the very last stitch, and there is a stitch there, so be weary. Now, you could have ended up with 79, or you could have ended up with 80 stitches. Um, sorry, 80 double crochets all the way across, right? Again, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong number that you need to be on. Um, again, I always like to do as many times as I can. I like to do patterns that are forgiving in numbers. Okay, so it's not as much counting. All right. Now, what we're going to do here, we are going to turn our work. Okay, so we go grab your, oh, let's do that. Grab your work, just bring it to the side there. And there you go. All right. Or, or you could just have gone like this bring it that way okay now I like normally I like to chain up three but in this pattern I've decided to put a single crochet in that very first I'm sorry it's not the first stitch it's the same stitch that you actually are in a single crochet is you pop your hook in that space we're going to put it through both loops yarn over hook pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two loops on your hook okay then we're going to chain two one and two now this is going to act as your three chains that you normally do at the beginning of a row I don't know whether I use the three chains in um, the practice stitch but for this one here we are doing this stitch the single crochet and two chains now in your next stitch now this is where we're going to do our first it's actually classified as our second stitch on the on YouTube but it's our first stitch for this um, scarf so you're going to pop your hook this, this is what we normally do we pop our hook between um, let's see a better version of it right there between the two loops there all right so it's actually classified as a stitch when we are doing a normal double crochet that's what we do however this row we are doing it through the front loop first and then the back loop of your next stitch the front loop of the next stitch after that and then the back loop of the next stitch after that now again if you are not sure of um, this to this way of crocheting I do have a practice tutorial the link of that is in the description box down below like I mentioned earlier so go ahead um, hop over to that link have a practice and come back to us in the meantime we're going to get started this was our first stitch that we've already worked in so we are going to go directly into the very next stitch there just into that front loop we're doing our normal double crochet which is yarn over hook pop it in your front loop yarn over hook pull up a loop and then you'll know it's a front loop because you've got that loop sitting at the back yarn over hook pull through two yarn over hook pull through the last two all right now you're going to go into your very next stitch but you're going into the back loop which is right there i'll get close up for you for the next two stitches so you can have a look or the next few stitches i should say all right 
So yarn have a hook. That's the stitch you've just worked in. We want to go in the next stitch with a front loop right there. All right. So yarn have a hook, pull up a loop. Yarn have a hook, pull through two. Yarn have a hook, pull through the last two. Yarn have a hook. Get ready for your next stitch, which is a back loop. Right there. Yarn have a hook, pull up a loop. Yarn have a hook, pull through two. And yarn have a hook, pull through the last two. Let me bring that out again so we can see a few more. Now we're going back into the front loop right there. Okay. Too simple, yeah? I think so. And then back loop into the very next stitch. Oh, it's probably too far away for you guys. Hang on a sec. I'll do it again. A little bit closer. That's better. And now we're going into the front stitch right there. Loop, not stitch. Sorry. <laughs> front loop. Back loop. Okay. Front loop. Now the first row is a little bit fiddly. The second row is a lot easier. I think it's because of the way it's um, forced to move backward and forward that it becomes a lot easier. That was your back loop. And then that was your, your next one is in there, your front loop. Now I'm going to show you quickly some of the things that you may come across whilst you're doing this. Okay. When I used to do front loop and back loop when I first started, I would pop my hook in that back loop right there. And then when I go to do the front loop, which is the next one, I would accidentally pop it in the front loop of the same stitch. So just be weary of that. You don't do that. Now, if you want to know if you've done it well or done it right, I should say, your front loop should bubble. Your back loop should sit at the back. Front should bubble in the front. Back loop should sit in the back. Front, back, front, back, front, back, front. And your next stitch will be back and so on until you reach the end of the row. Uh, get to the last two stitches and I'll meet you up. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row. How gorgeous is it? I know, I know I say everything's gorgeous, but still, <laughs> it's what you do, right? <laughs> All right, so we have, well, I have, I don't know about yourself, I have one stitch, two stitches left and chains. Okay, so I ended up with my last, that's the front stitch, the front loop. Then there's the back loop on your second last stitch or your third last stitch, I should say. doesn't matter where you ended up, just keep going. And then there's your front loop on that last stitch or my front loop could be a back loop for you and then i've got chains there there's about the three chains there that we started with i'm just going to pop a normal double crochet in the top of the chains there okay it's just a normal one all right easy easy so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn our work again. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I will be changing our colour, not in this row coming, but the row after, okay? So you turn your work like normal, okay? Okay, and we blow it up. Now, okay, first we'll do that first stitch that we did, like we did in the previous row, where we put a single crochet in the same stitch that we're in like so there's your single crochet and then we chained up two one and two all right now we have to do your front loops and back loops again now what we need to do let me just show you closely so you can see all right now in my previous row that last stitch was a front loop okay so when you look at it in front this way it kind of indents back so whenever you see a stitch that indents back that's your back loop you work in a back loop when you see a stitch that's got a little bubble in front you work in the front loop so this stitch here has indented at the back a bit so i need to pop my double crochet in the back loop all right if yours is in the front then you need to do a front loop so there's the bubble in front little bubble right in front there it's sort of sticky out <laughs> there's that word again i like to use it sort of sticks out a bit yep that's where you do your front loop 
okay you actually are doing the opposite to the other side okay so in other words the other side there that is a back loop only that's a front loop right so when i'm doing it this side i'm doing it in the back loop very tricky but all you have to remember is the one that's pushed further back that's when you do a back loop in it all right i'm hoping this is making sense and that little bubble you see lifting up right there right there is when we do a front loop okay and then back loop because that's push back and the front loops push forward so we put it in the front loop all right easy easy all right now what we're going to do we're going to do this all the way across let me show you all so you know what you're doing we yeah i'm <laughs> sorry guys i get really excited when i when i do these tutorials okay so you're going to do that all the way across until you get to your last two stitches there plus your little chain so these last two stitches and your chains all right do that now and i'll catch you up all right guys here we are at the end of our third row and if you look carefully you can already let me see if i can get a nice close-up you can already start to see the design okay probably a little bit difficult for you to see here on mine but have a look at your work and you'll see that your your um front loops are on top of your front and your back are at the back of your backs okay i'm hoping that made sense okay oh bring that out a bit all right gorgeous 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 all right now we have um two left at the end plus our chains all right so i've got a um a stick out one so that's a front loop i don't know what you have there okay and uh, my last one sits kind of back so that's going to be a back loop oh it's very tricky this one it's quite tricky that very last stitch so make sure you get into that last stitch there so it actually belongs to that you can see how it belongs to that okay do your double crochet now you've got chains left so now we're going to put our double crochet at the very very top chain right there so you've got your single your chain and then your third chain remember so we've done our double crochet we're only doing half a double crochet here we're doing a normal double crochet but we're going to stop on the last two stitches why because we are going to change our thread color pretty exciting all right so grab your pearl or your white or whatever color contrast you used okay i'm using the pearl pull it through and you've changed your color right there just for now hold your copper and your pearl ends just the ends at the back and this is your let me get a nice close-up this is your thread that you're going to work with these are the little ends that you still have hanging off it so turn your work like you would normally do a single crochet make sure you're holding all your threads at the back because this is going to get loose it can become loose so you do a single crochet in that first stitch chain two one and two now we are going to continue with the design all we're doing is changing color here okay so we are going to see the one that's sticking out a little bit that's a front loop now so we're going to do a normal front loop in that stitch okay and see that one going pushing right back you need to do a back loop in that one just as we did in the previous row and this is sticking out so you do it at the front too easy too easy i know right i know front and back okay let's have a quick look see at what we're doing all right there we go so that's pretty much all you did what you could do now what you should do now actually is give your copper a cut because we are doing three coppers and two pearls three rows in copper and two rows in the pearl so oh what i want you to do so you're not watching me sitting there watching me do it continue in that manner of your fronts and your backs all the way across until you get to the end of the row 
the last two stitches and meet me up. All right, here we are at the end of the row and I've got two left. We've got an indented one there. So I'm going to do one in the back loop. An indented one just means pushed at the back. Okay. And then we've got one sticking out here. So I've got to do that in the front loop. Okay. Now there's that stitch from before where we did our single crochet and our two chains. We need to do a double crochet in that very top chain right there. Okay. And there we go. Now we are still using the pearl. Okay. So all you have to do is turn your work again like you've been doing all along. And do a single crochet in that same stitch right there. Okay, chain one and two. Now, this row here, again, that's indented. See the little bubble here? That one there is indented, pushed back. So we are going to pop a double crochet in the back loop of that one. Okay, there. This one is lifting up and facing us on the bottom there. We're going to pop it in the front loop of that stitch. Okay, that's pushed back. So we're going to pop it in the back loop. I think you get the picture, yeah? <laughs> front and back and front and back all the way across, if I can get it right myself. <laughs> front, back. I have found it a little bit more easier to do as you go along each row. I really don't like doing front loops. <laughs> I don't mind the back loops. I think my hand automatically pushes the work forward to help me do it but the back loops very very awkward I mean front loops sorry very very awkward there you go all right so what we're going to do again is whoops sorry wrong way okay is go all the way across until you get to the end of this row here now we are going to change copper when we get to the end of the row it's going to go back into the copper so when you get to there just meet me up and I'll let you know what we're going to do next all right guys here we are at the end of this row and i have a um, little stick out one there at the second last stitch or third last stitch and i'm going to put a front double crochet in that one and then there's that one that's sitting right back so i'm going to put a back one in there remember that is actually a stitch it's a little bit tricky but it's there okay don't forget you do have to put one in there okay and there you go now you have your single crochet and your two chains that's a nice tight chain right there <laughs> see if you can get your double crochet in that nice tight chain <laughs> i did now only do half the double crochet so you pull it through the two loops hold it there because we are going to change back to the copper all right just pop your copper around your hook pull the loop through okay now remember what we did before we held on to the tail end of the copper and your white at the back. Okay, now turn your work, pop your hook in the same space and do a single crochet in copper. If it's a bit loose, just give it a gentle tug, not too hard. And then you do a, sorry, two chains, one and two. Remembering where we started, that's sticking out, so that is going to be a front stitch there. Okay. And now that one's sitting further back or indented, so we'll do a back post on that one. And then your front. And then your back. And then your front. Okay, actually, no, what? We'll stop there. Firstly, we are going to cut that white. Okay. Okay, so what I want you to do now, this is the best bit, guys, for this design. Oh, too far away. Sorry, guys. What I want you to do now is go ahead and do your copper all the way across here. Do a turn and do your copper all the way across to the other side. So one, turn, and then two. And I'll meet you up. All right, here we are at the end of this row. Now we are going to pop this one sticking out. So we're going to put a front loop in that one. This is the end of your second row, by the way. 
okay and we this one here is sticking out that way a little bit so we're going to pop a double crochet in the back loop now remember we have that single crochet and the two chains we are going to pop a double crochet in the top of that chain right there and there you go just pull up a loop nice and long so i can tell you what to do next this is the best part guys well the best part for this part of our tutorial okay what we're going to do is we are going to weave in one of these ends or two of them or whatever you like to do let's start with a white okay now with these ends they're actually if you look carefully they're all on one side for now let's go all right now the this part of our cowl will have a border on it oh it's too far away sorry guys we're going to be crocheting over this bit anyway so if you wanted to you could just weave that up and down there which is exactly pretty much what i'm going to do okay so what's the easiest way to do this because you've got your brown and you've got there's your brown and there's your white okay so i think the best way is just to go back in there because you're going to go over that line right there that way it looks like you planned it see looks like your stitch so now that you've done that all you need to do is don't weave it in all the way this way because this one needs to be weaved in as well so just weave this in up and down through here a few times and my way of weaving and I most of you know I literally split my stitch okay I don't just weave in and out I split the stitch it's an absolute no-no in crochet <laughs> <laughs> because if you had to take that undone you can't well you probably could try it but trust me I've done it before and it's hard to take undone so really make sure that your work is super 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 perfect before doing this because if you're anything like me and it's not super perfect see how I've split those stitches right there um, you might want to take it undone to fix it and you won't be able to once you've done this all right now I'm going to do it one more time So I'm going to cut that, all right, and remember we're going to crochet over it so you won't even see it, all right, and it actually doesn't look visible anyway. All right, so what I want you to do, this is the end of part one by the way, that's why I'm showing you the ends, I want you to weave in all these ends and when we come back for part two we are going to change the design, okay, we are going to do the next stitch design. In the meantime, Check this gorgeous front and back loop design. And I love the fact that we've changed the color in between. Now, as I mentioned about the colors, um, the white and, or pearl, I should say, and um, the copper, the reason I use these, I mentioned this in the, in the actual promo, is because my dog was a King Charles Cavalier and she was a Blenheim. And the Blenheim are gorgeous colors of your browns and whites. So the copper and white look gorgeous very much like their fur so i will pop a little picture at the end of uh, this tutorial of the colors of my honey and you can see what i mean by the copper and the pearl together all right so thank you very much for watching part one of the honey cow don't forget to join me again in uh, a couple of days time to do part two thanks so much for watching and guess what guys ciao for now